SOS Ministries, where our vision and our mandate is to see the salvation of souls, edification of the body of Christ, to see kingdom benefits manifest in the lives of believers, and to make very sure that we don't preach others in. And at the end here, depart from me, I do not know you. So, on this webisode of SOS Ministries, this snippet for your soul, we're going to be talking a little bit about sin. Sounds like such an ugly word, sin. Like, especially when you say to a believer, like, it comes from the mouth of a believer. It just sounds like such an ugly word. But if we're trying to keep it real, I know and you know that sin in its actual form is not as ugly as the word may sound. In fact, the very reason that so many of us stay so long before we surrender our lives to God, the very reason that so many um, who may be listening right now just refuse to surrender is because sin just feels so good. Sin feels good. In fact, if the enemy didn't make sin alluring and feel good, at least in the here and now, he'd be an idiot. Because what incentive would there be to sin? So if we're honest with ourselves, we will say that sin feels so good. And especially for those who do not know the profound pleasure of living a life that is holy and acceptable to God, the temporary pleasures of sin, and be very mindful that they are temporary, temporary pleasures of sin. Even for the briefest moment, it just feels so good. It just feels so good. And contrary to popular belief, Satan is not this hideous looking creature with in a red suit uh, it, he's, he doesn't have a horns and he's not a figment of our imagination that's not the way he comes in direct contrast to that rather the enemy comes in and he's a very real smooth talking conscience numbing seducing alluring um being who wants to get us to do what he wants to get us to do because he understands and he knows that the wages of sin is death. He knows that his his eternity has already been mapped out. And he knows that this is this is the time where we get to make that choice. So he makes sin look good and it feels good and it just it just seems unimaginable to surrender or to live anything but sinful, especially when you're trapped in what we call the pleasures of sin. Um but not surprisingly, the Bible calls Lucifer. The Bible calls the devil the father of lies. The Bible calls him the father of lies. And that is to say that if the repercussions of sin were immediately visible, then we would be so repulsed. Because there is actually no substantial pleasure in sin. It may feel good for a moment. It may feel good for as long as you allow it to master you. Because the Bible says, and this may not sit very well with Whoever sins is a slave to sin. So you may think, ah, I'm free. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to live by any rules or commandments or those burdensome, those burdensome um, commandments. But in actuality, you are a slave to sin if you continue to live by the dictates of the flesh. If you continue to surrender uh, the enemy, then you are a slave to sin. And is that really how? want to live? Is that really how you want to live your life? Knowing that in the end of it, there's there's no benefit. At the end of it all, it just leads to death. And not just death, whereas we die and, you know, we're buried and that's the end of it all. If that was the end of it all, then not so bad. Continuing to live in sin will guarantee you one-way ticket to an eternity of torment, an eternity of hell, an eternity of fire, where the fire quenches not and the worms, they don't die. And it's a torturous, tormenting place. And this is my question to you today. Whatever is holding you back from surrendering your life to God, whatever it might be, I, it might be the pleasures of sin in whatever way, whatever strong, whatever your struggle might be. It might be drugs, it might be alcohol, it might be fornication, it might be adultery, it might be reveling, it might be just those 
lies it might be your career, or whatever it might be, whatever is holding you back from surrendering your all to God. I want you to meditate upon this question. Is it really worth your soul? Like, is it really, is that thing really worth an eternity separation from God? The Bible says sin is a disgrace to any people. In Proverbs 14, 34, sin is a disgrace to any people. And its wages, the payment for sin, is death. Is it worth it? I get it. I know it's not an easy decision and I'm not going to trivialize it because I've been there and I've done that and I know when you're trapped in the pleasures of sin, honestly, just for the sake of it, a life of righteousness just doesn't seem as appealing. But when you get to understand the love of God, when you get to understand the amazing grace of of a God that is so holy and is so righteous, and know and understand that that God would sacrifice his only begotten son, that you don't have to die, that you don't have to pay for your own sins, but that he would place the burden and the wages of your sin on his son. You could actually be be, be reunited in relationship with your father, then honestly, nothing, nothing compares to living a life that pleases God. And that's what it is. When you come to know God, it's not about following thou shall not and thou shall. And thou. it's not, it doesn't feel so burdensome if you're doing it just because you just love God. And once you get to know the love of God for you, loving him, loving God is easy. Loving God is easy. The more you know him, is the more you love him. And the more you love him, is the more you want to please him. The more you just, it's the same way in the natural, the same way in the spiritual. If you truly love somebody, you want to please them. If you're in a healthy relationship where somebody's giving you 110% in everything, every day, you want to show this person that you love them. So if you know they like certain things, you do it because they tell you to do it but you just love making somebody happy you just love making you just love making somebody's day because they do that for you all the time and even if earthly love cannot be compared to the love that our god has for us honestly loving god just makes you want to please him that's why the bible says if you love me you'll do my commandments not because it's burden somewhere not because it's heavy or not because the law says thou shalt and thou shalt not just because i just love him I just, just want to please him. So is that thing worth dying for? Think about that today. Jesus Christ died for your sins so that you don't have to continue to live a sinful life. Jesus Christ died for your sins so that you can be in relationship with the Father, so that you can live a life that is holy and righteous before God, not out of your own willpower, because okay, none of us do it out of our own willpower. God is so amazing and so merciful that he will give you the grace that you need to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto him. He's not allowing you to get it right on your own. He's not asking you to just, um, you know, just, just because you accept him, you know, you, you think you're going to just immediately and completely be delivered from every single stronghold and every single... It doesn't work like that. A lot of people are delivered from, from certain strongholds instantaneously. For the majority of us, it's a process. It's a process. And it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight. But this one thing I can promise you is that God, once you commit your heart and your life to him, he is able to, to keep you. God is a keeper. He is able to mold you. He is able to transform you. He is able to work on you until you are exactly what he wants you to be. He is able to, he does the heavy lifting. I remember just because, just before I got saved, one of my major concerns was like, God, how am I going to live up to all your standards? How am I supposed to do this and this and this when I've, I've never done that. Like, straight up, I've never done that. And the things that I have been doing just felt so right. Like, how am I, I can't possibly live up to your standards. It's not about what we do. It's about the grace of God. We are the righteousness of God, not on our own accord through Christ Jesus. And if we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, he will show us the ways that he wants to transform us. And if we're obedient, then we will follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Then we will listen to the voice of God. Then we will hear what he says. And I promise you, 
There's nothing, no stronghold in your life that God cannot deliver you from. There's no sin that you've ever committed, or any sin that you've been committing for years and years and years that God cannot break the chain. You need to know God. You need to know the power of the Almighty God. There is absolutely no sin that is beyond the grace of God. There is absolutely no stronghold there is nothing that you can do there's nothing that you can you've ever done god isn't able to just deliver you from i am telling you